All right, I'm gonna go shut off the flow at the compressor so I can undo this connection and see if I can't see what's going on. Well, I took this fitting out. I was hoping I would see like an internal plastic plug or something that I missed, but no such luck. So, something's wrong. Okay, I have unplugged the power for safety and I have unscrewed all the screws that I believe are going to allow me to take this cover off. So now we're going to get the first look inside, see if we can't see any damage, uh, obvious damage caused by the freight incident that led to this being sold so cheap or worse yet, we'll see parts missing. I'll say this much for them, this company made it easy to get in here. Yeah, it ain't going in there already. Anyways, uh, it's easy to take that cover off and expose everything here. So far, looking on the side here, I do not see anything to indicate to me that uh, there are there's no burn marks. There's no obvious parts missing on the side here. That's all good stuff. So now we're looking at uh, this PC board on the top here. And this PC board on the top here also. I do not see any obvious cracks in the board or damage to the board. No burnt components. I don't see any loose wires hanging out anywhere. That's all good stuff. But problem remains we've got no air so let's see how this thing's supposed to work by the looks of it we've got the air comes in here and goes straight through this regulator dryer I'm calling it a dryer because when I take this bottom bulb off it actually looks like there's a little filter in there so Anyways, put that back. So, air comes through the regulator, goes through this tube, goes down. Oh, before I go any further, I want to bring up a, a point here. Uh, see these big blue things with the big copper straps going to them? Those are big capacitors, and they can store a charge. So if you're ever working on one of these and you have the cover off, even with an unplugged, it can still be very dangerous to work on. You don't want to be touching anywhere around here. Uh, so I'm going to be real careful. Needless to say. Alright, so let's see if I can't see where that hose is going. That hose goes down to... Well, there we go. It goes to this solenoid. And this solenoid then apparently lets the air come back. Oh, this is interesting. This is the line going up to the air. This is the line going up to that air regulator right there. And uh, guess what, guys? That line is just teed off of the input of the solenoid. So that almost looks like that should be looking at whatever pressure is going into this thing, period. Even when it's off. Huh. Well, I've been playing around with this and I've come to the determination that there's no air passing through my regulator here. I think this is where the problem lies, is right in this unit. So I'm going to actually, I've loosened this up and I didn't hear any air. I'm going to actually take this off altogether and see what I hear. Yeah, there's your problem right there. You see, I got this line completely loosened. It's the compression fitting right here. I've got that completely loose and there's not any air coming out. Meanwhile, if I loosen this, What the heck? Oh man, do I feel dumb. There's a little red plastic doohickey down in there. I bet you that's what's blocking this thing. Now when I unpacked this, uh, this air dryer, I pulled out that plug and that plug, and what I missed was a third one. So, duh! Now because I cranked this thing so darn much towards the plus side, I think I'm going to back it all the way back down a lot before I uh, before I put my air back on just in case 
Now I'm getting air to here, so now I gotta retighten this back up. And as I suspected, because it's just in a T, I get an air pressure reading as soon as the uh, air is hooked up to the unit. So the test, I'm assuming what, I'm assuming what the test is going to do is it's going to force the solenoid to stay open. That's exactly what it does. So the torch is blowing air right now. So that's what the test does. So you see, this is my. Uh, standby pressure but what I want is I want to adjust while it's running which is right now it's at 60 so just turn this down turn this knob clockwise I believe towards the plus let's see is that plus yeah and we want that knob we want that reading to come up why is that reading not coming up? Well, maybe my pressure's not set high enough downstairs. Okay, I increased the pressure downstairs. That's better. Now I'm getting 70. 70. It's like no amount of cranking on that knob though is changing that reading. That's bothering me. Well, I guess I could try it at 65 and see what I get. Alright, let's suit up. Oh, one of the things about this newer camera I'm using is there's no tripod mount on it. Well, I don't know how well that camera's gonna stay there, but. Never done this before, so hopefully I can not screw up too bad. My understanding is it started at an angle, and once it pierces through, then you continue your cut. Oh, is that sweet? <laughs> that is cool. That is so cool. Wow. We'll do a couple more little cuts and then I'll uh, show you a close up. I didn't do as well on that one. It's gonna take a little practice. There's a drag tip that I can use with this which keeps it perfectly spaced off there. I think it's in that little plastic kit of parts that came with this thing. I'm, uh, I'm set at uh, just a little under, probably around 28 amps. And this is, uh, what is this, like quarter inch? Not even. It's, uh, it's just a piece of angle iron. It's one of the few things I could find hanging around here that I felt like I could spare cutting up. I had some other scrap and I can't find it right now. But uh, try this. I was going along well there and then I caught the grass on fire so I had to stop. Alright, let's uh, shut this off. Oh, I need one glove to touch that metal. All right, guys, so here's my, uh, this little chunk right here 
I cut out. That was my first attempt. And uh, see, I cut out nice and clean. And then on my second attempt, I wasn't. I started out cutting out through, and then I kind of messed up there. And then on my third attempt, I went a little slower, and it was cutting much better. And then I had to stop about. Uh, I say I stopped right about there because that's where uh, I had noticed the ground was on fire at my feet, and I had a feeling it was going to go for my knees. <laughs> So, but uh, the main point of today's exercise isn't, uh, it's not about training me how to use the plasma cutter. It's about whether or not this plasma cutter works. And it works. And I'll tell you what, I'm sure I can cut much thicker than this because this thing's rated for, I forgot what it's rated for, but it's rated pretty high. But my limitation right now is my inferior extension cord. So I'm going to have to get a heavy duty extension cord to. Uh, help me out with this and also uh, with the Lincoln arc welder well that's all for today out of time kids good baseball practice but that was fun while it lasted <laughs>